Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and I appreciate very much uh, the uh, facilitation of NACA. And thank you, uh, uh, Wang Ji, for uh, uh, making this arrangement that in the framework of the plans to set up a new consortium, the International Artemia Aquaculture Consortium, that we can have today a webinar specifically on the use of Artemia in uh, uh, aquaculture hatcheries. I think uh, everyone knows that Artemia is playing a crucial role in uh, the start feeding of a number of uh, crustaceans and fish. Well, uh, this was in fact not such an evident uh, situation back in 1976 at the very first uh, conference on aquaculture, I must say, and that was the FAO conference in Kyoto, where as you see, the brine shrimp Artemia was considered the bottleneck in mariculture, because at that time, there was only one source of Artemia cysts available in the market from the USA. We were uh, suggesting a number of possible improvements, and you see, and that will be the focus today, improved techniques for cyst harvesting, processing, storage, hatching, and use in uh, the uh, uh, hatcheries. Well, in uh, 1978, uh, at uh, Ghent University, we set up the Artemia Reference Center, and it was particularly thanks to the support of uh, a lot of research institutes, uh, I must say, around the world, who joined in the international study on Artemia to uh, uh, do um, a lot of first basic uh, research on uh, Artemia, uh, the different strains, the different uh, uses, uh, the different characteristics of its biology. And this resulted in uh, several books published in 1980, 1987, a number of manuals, the first one in 86, and then the one uh, uh, Wang Ji was referring to, the FAO Manual on Production and Use of Live Food for Aquaculture. Um, in the meantime, this uh, 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 critical role of Artemia is well uh, recognized. And as you see here, we can still say today that the key to successful aquaculture is in, indeed uh, to uh, uh, see how, er, how Artemia can assist in uh, setting up a predictable, a cost-effective and a high-quality uh, production in uh, the hatcheries. Over the years, with the expansion of hatchery aquaculture, the successful developments in shrimp farming, in marine fish farming, we see that the consumption of Artemia has really increased quite quickly, is um, stagnating maybe now around the 3,500 tons of Artemia because um, the dependence on Artemia is not as critical anymore in terms of quantity as it was uh, in the early years. Just to give you a figure, where in the early years, people consumed about 25 kilos of Artemia cysts to produce 1 million shrimp post larvae. Today, it can be done with uh, uh, 2 to 3 kilos uh, of uh, Artemia cysts. And in the meantime, we can see that uh, this has uh, resulted in a multi-billion US dollar industry, just the production of the uh, uh, fry and post larvae. And this ends up in uh, uh, impressive uh, uh, total production of 10 million tons of high quality species. So where initially uh, we were limited uh, because of the initial developments and the limited resources, but already as of the early 1980s, we have seen that a number of other uh, uh, strains and species of Artemia became available. Let me just spend a few minutes to uh, uh, cover a little bit on the biology of Artemia. And you will see that this knowledge is quite important to uh, understand some of the applications and maybe where we will have to realize that uh, some of this knowledge is not enough taken into account today in uh, the uh, commercial hatcheries. So Artemia cysts are in fact dried embryos. We call them eggs, but uh, the correct name is cysts. Uh, they have a very low water content. They are very hygroscopic. So if you leave them in the humid air, they will start to hydrate. There is zero metabolism, where initially we thought that it was a, a dormancy, a very, very low metabolic activity. It is zero metabolism. And as soon as they can swell and uh, hydrate, the embryonic development can continue. Another detail, but important to know, is... Uh, um, this is a cross-section here of the shell of Artemia. 
uh, the outer part is the dark brown colored chorion. Uh, then here inside you have the embryo and uh, uh, um, uh, um, outer cuticular membrane. And it is this outer cuticular membrane that has a very unique characteristic. It's like a molecular sieve. Uh, oxygen molecule, water, carbon dioxide can go in and out, but any molecule bigger than the carbon dioxide cannot get through this uh, molecular sieve. And it is, in fact, when you will hear later about decapsulated cysts, it is this part, the uh, chorion, the dark brown part, that can be removed in uh, producing the decapsulated cysts. So uh, when they are dry, it's like a, a, a flat football. You uh, uh, let them hydrate in seawater. And once fully hydrated and they become uh, spherical, a light trigger is critical, is essential in order to start that carbohydrate metabolism. And the carbohydrate metabolism is in fact a, uh, a, a decomposition uh, uh, of the three halos into glycogen as an energy source and glycerol. And glycerol, as uh, you might know, is a very hygroscopic uh, product. So the more glycerol is produced, the more water will be absorbed. And of course, uh, water can come in, as I mentioned to you, uh, O2 can come in, CO2 uh, can go out. So the content of the hygroscopic glycerol in the cysts will increase. That means that the pressure inside that cyst shell will increase. And at a certain moment, that osmotic pressure will result in a breaking, in a cracking of uh, the shell. And at that moment, very crucial and very important to recall is that at the moment of breaking, that glycerol that was playing that important role here in the carbohydrate metabolism is released in the hatching medium. And this glycerol is a very good substrate for Vibrio. So this is a cyst in the breaking stage, a little bit later, we call this the umbrella stage when the embryo is fully released from the shell. And then the hatching enzyme is released and the nucleus in star one, freshly hatched in star one nucleus is released. Schematically, we see it one more time here. In an hour uh, at room temperature, we will have a full hydration. That's the moment that a light trigger is critical to start the metabolism. And then we go through the process of breaking and hatching. In star one, in star two, with a very, very important difference that in star one is fully surrounded by an ectoderm. And that means no functional digestive tract. It's a number of hours later, depending on the temperature, that the crustacean larva will molt into the second stage, the in star two stage. And at that moment, the animal has an open mouth, functional digestive system. And that means that it will filter out particles in the water, in the hatching medium. That means collecting and taking up Vibrio. Here uh, you see uh, uh, a coloration when you are using Lugol solution, you can easily check non-colored in star one, colored uh, in star two stages. I will not go into the details of uh, what is needed for good hatching in terms of temperature, salinity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation will be made available. This is all the information that has been well documented in the manuals and in a number of other uh, operating procedures. I also draw to your attention without going into the details that today there are quite a number of different species and strains uh, available in the market. Artemia and Artemia is two. You have to realize that there might be differences in size, hatching characteristics, nutritional value, etc. Again, no time to go into details here. Also important to tell you that there are uh, parameters, there are tools and techniques available to check on uh, the hatching quality, hatching percentage, hatching efficiency, hatching rate, again, all well described in the different manuals. Particularly for this presentation, I'm showing you also this slide to draw your attention to the hatching synchrony, the speed of hatching. So you might have a product here with a very similar hatching efficiency in terms of number of nuclei that are produced, but um, these 360 degrees are split up in hours 
So halfway you are at 24 hours incubation. You see that in 24 hours, some have finished the hatching, others still have to start the hatching. So you see at the size of this blue green part, the synchrony of hatching can be very different from one batch, from one strain to the other. To produce and use uh, the Artemia nopii, there are a number of steps and I uh, expect that we will see a lot of examples in the different presentations on how these different steps are executed in big, small hatcheries, fish, crustaceans, Latin America, Europe, uh, Asia. Cyst decapsulation is also a technique uh, that was uh, uh, described, so where you can in fact remove the outer shell and uh, either have a better hatching and start with a, a very clean product. You can also uh, uh, store the product upon uh, dehydration, which you can do uh, in uh, brine. Of course, I draw your attention that this decapsulation technique uh, uh, releases chlorine. Uh, so uh, you have to think about uh, the, the health of the people who are doing the process and also the effluent of uh, the decapsulation proce process uh, can uh, cause environmental problems. I'm showing slides from uh, maybe 20, 30 years ago because I'm expecting in the presentations to see more updated uh, slides on uh, the systems that are used for hatching. I only like to draw your attention again to uh, the cleaning and the washing and the importance that we have always underlined minimal physical damage. Very important to make sure that when you are harvesting the Artemia nopii, washing and cleaning them, that they should always be submerged, uh, as you can see in these different uh, examples. Now, I also draw your attention that uh, new equipment, uh, already 20 and more years in use, the so-called cross-flow sieves, uh, much more efficient in washing and uh, cleaning Artemia. Finally, I also need to draw your attention to uh, what I uh, explained earlier about uh, the molting from INSTAR1 and in INSTAR2. This is just a matter of hours, either in the hatching tank, or uh, it could also be when you have a long retention time in your uh, hatchery, the technique where you can do cold storage. And I hope that we will hear several presentations about the application of this technique of cold storage. This way you can guarantee to have your Instar 1 stored for up to 24 hours in that first larval stage at high density to feed your animals uh, with the most nutritious uh, source of food. So in conclusion, uh, these are the different forms that are being used, the capsulated cyst, the umbrella stage, Instar 1, and then uh, the uh, uh, enriched metanopii. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.